Kia ora, welcome back. I'm the Kiwi Coder, and today I'm here to show you how to make your character aim a weapon at the center of the screen, like you can see here. Uh, so the weapon follows along with the character's animation, as you can see. Uh, its axis is actually fixed to the center of the screen, even while moving. Um, the head and the body both uh, also follow the, the center of the screen, and yeah, the character can turn in circles and everything else. Before we get started, I'm just going to show you what I have in my scene here. Um, so this tutorial actually follows on from two of my previous tutorials. Uh, the first one is the uh, third person shooter character locomotion tutorial. Um, and the second one is the Unity Animation Rigging uh, Attaching a Weapon tutorial. You can follow this tutorial first and then this one second and that will get you into the same state that uh, I'm beginning this tutorial from. So in our scene, we've got the uh, the character, which has got the character aiming script, the character locomotion script. It's got a, uh, a rig builder. It's got some physics, an animator. We've got cine machine looking at our character. Uh, we've got the weapon added as a child of the clavicle and some, some hand IK stuff. Cool. Um, so yeah, we're ready to get started now. Uh, so the first thing I actually want to do is uh, change the way this, this weapon is parented to this clavicle bone. Um, one, one reason for doing that is this weapon is currently inheriting the position and the rotation from this bone. And uh, I just actually want to inherit the position only. So uh, we can do that just by dragging this out. And we're going to use a new uh, constraint node from the animation rigging package to do this. Um, but just before we do that, um, there's just something that we want to do to save ourselves some time a little bit later, which is actually change the pivot point of the, uh, the gun. Currently, when you, when you rotate the gun, um, it's rotating around the handle, which is it's okay, but it actually makes it a little bit hard to aim with. Um, so we want to change the pivot point just to back here. So if, uh, if you create a new um, child node here called like weapon pivot, and just move that node somewhere up the back here and we want this to be the parent node so we just drag it out and then drag the weapon as a child beneath it and now when we when we rotate that parent node um, the gun actually yeah rotates around the butt point which is it makes it much easier to aim with i'm just going to move this slightly forward yeah that looks much better Cool. Um, so yeah, now we have our weapon uh, pulled outside of our skeleton. Uh, we're going to create a, a new rig layer uh, to handle this parenting to the clavicle bone. But before we do that, I just want to rename this rig layer to uh, Hand IK. And cool, just to because we're going to be creating a few different rig layers, so it's handy to give them different names. Um, so this one is going to be called Weapon Pose and we need to attach a rig component to that and we need to then assign that rig into our rig builder and the order here is, uh, is important the hand IK should always come last uh, basically we want to aim our weapon and then make our hands attach to the grips as a final step so the order of the rig layers here should match the order of the rig layers in the scene um, because that order is how the animation system will process each of our rigs. Cool, so we've created our new weapon pose rig. Uh, so let's just create a new child called weapon pose. And this is going to use a multi-parent constraint. So we wanna constrain the pivot point of the weapon uh, to this node. And let's just set the offset to none. And what this effectively does is parents this weapon pivot to this uh, this pose point here. Uh, the pose is currently to the floor so we just want to swap the transforms of this pose and this pivot. So if I just copy this and paste this into the pose uh, and then clear out the, the weapon position. Now our weapon pose is up here and our weapon's down here. So if we hit play yeah, now we have the weapon is is uh, it's basically yeah this this multi-parent constraint node is constraining the weapon to this this weapon pose node here, 
Um, so you can see that uh, if I change the position of this pose node, so notice I'm not changing the position of the weapon, it's of the weapon pose, uh, it correctly updates the weapon position, which is pretty handy. Um, so one thing that you might have noticed is uh, the position has not been inherited from our clavicle bone, um, see, because we pulled it out of the skeleton. Um, so we can fix that up by adding a multi-position constraint. Um, this needs to be positioned before the multi-parent constraint. Basically the last step is uh, positioning the pivot to the weapon pose. Um, so the, the thing that we're going to constrain here is the actual weapon pose itself. Um, so this is basically saying uh, inherit the position of the clavicle, which we'll select here. Uh, and here at the position of the clavicle into this weapon pose node, um, if I just turn the offset off, now if we have a look at this, it's going to look a little bit weird. Uh, not too weird, but yeah, the offsets just uh, currently it's constrained exactly, so we need to just adjust the offsets here, um, so it looks a little better. Cool. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good, and you can see that the weapon is now bouncing along with our character. Uh, which looks much more realistic. So I'll just copy these values, paste them back into the, the constraint, uh, paste component values. Cool. Um, so now we have our hand IK, our weapon pose layers set up, and our weapon pivot is all good. So we're ready to actually start aiming our weapon. So I'm going to create a new rig layer. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate the weapon pose one that we have here. Um, and I'm going to give that the name Weapon Aiming. So we need to assign that to the Rig Builder. Uh, position it in the middle. Um, this is the order that things are going to be processed in. So first we pose the weapon, um, and then we're going to aim it afterwards, and then we're going to attach our hands to the to the weapon. So yeah, if we just hit play, Um, not much has changed, uh, but we can actually change this this pose uh, here specific for this weapon aiming rig. Uh, so if I just zero out the rotation, um, that's going to give us a pretty good starting point. Uh, it is a little bit far back, so we need to just adjust the uh, the position. Oops, not that button. The Z position, and then push it down a little bit, and push it in a little bit that way yeah something like that maybe eight cool so yeah now we have a um, a new pose for our weapon for the aiming pose um, and i'll show you what happens basically we can then blend this uh this rig layer in and out and see how easy it is to go from the running pose to uh, to our aiming pose, um, which is pretty cool. So this, you can imagine this weight controller being controlled either from script or you can control it from the animation state graph, uh, which yeah, is pretty flexible. So I'm just gonna copy these values, come out of play mode, paste them back in, paste component values. Um, so we zeroed out our rotation. Yeah, cool. So just check everything's working again. Yep, looks good. Um, so the next thing is actually to make our weapon uh, look at that that cross here. Uh, so to do that, we we need uh, to create a new a new constraint called the multi aim constraint, um, and we're creating that under the weapon aiming rig layer. And this aim constraint again needs to go before the parent constraint. Um, because we, these these constraints here are adjusting the weapon pose, uh, which is then used as the source object of the final constraint, they need to come beforehand, otherwise there's going to be uh, syncing problems later on. Um, so the multi-aim constraint uh, needs a an object to constrain, so in that case it's going to be a weapon pose. Um, <clears throat> and the source object is what we're aiming at. So. The easiest way to, to have something to aim at is just create a child object of the camera called aim look at and just position that 
you know, 20 units or something in front of the camera. Um, and assign, assign that look at node to the multi-aim constraint. Uh, the last thing we need to uh, do here is the aim axis. Um, so the way to figure that out is just to be in local space um, and use the transform gizmo to see which axis is pointing forwards. So in that case, it's the blue one, which is the Z axis. So we just set the Z axis here. And the settings, we need to just turn off the uh, rotation offset um, because we want our weapon pose to aim exactly at our look at node. Cool, so let's just test all of that. Hopefully it works. Cool. Uh, yeah, so if I look up, the weapon goes up. If I look down, the weapon goes down. Um, and the arms are all following after the fact, um, which is, yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. Um, so the next thing is actually to adjust the, the head and the body to make it look a little bit more natural. Uh, currently the, the weapon itself is is aiming, but um, the head and the body like should really follow as well somewhat. Um, I think it just gives a lot more realism to it. So to do that, uh, we need to create yet another rig layer. And I'm just going to call this one rig layer body aim. Uh, and this is going to be the very first thing to calculate. So it needs to be at the top. Um, so if we just add a rig component, assign um, the body aim layer, position that at the top. Uh, the reason for doing that is because the weapon pose and the weapon aiming both want to inherit the uh, positions that we change of the body here. Um, so it needs to be the first thing. Um, cool. So. The, if we just go and have a look at the skeleton for a second, we can see that there's a few bones that we can actually change on the body to aim. One of them is the, the spine bone, uh, and there is also the spine two. The spine three, I think, is not super realistic for, for this rotation. I don't think people really bend around that joint. Um, it's more used for aiming in this direction. Um, yeah and the final ones are the neck and the the head um, you can actually pick either of these i'm not 100 percent sure like which looks better but for this tutorial i'm just going to use the head and the other two i'm going to use are the spine and the spine two cool so we're going to create um, a new node called let's just start with the head aim head and use the multi-aim constraint again. So just drag the head node in there. Um, again, to figure out which axis it is, we just select the head, use the transform gizzo, make sure we're in local space, and it's the blue arrow pointing forward, which is our Z axis. So we just change the Z aim axis here to Z. And then um, the source object is the thing that we're aiming at. So just drag in the aim look at node and turn off the aim offset again just because yeah we wanted to aim exactly cool uh, so yeah let's just test this out if i look up the head now looks up if i look down the head looks down it's already looking like way better um, so let me just quickly do the other two nodes uh, so the first one is called spine one the second one is called whoops spine two and then we want to assign spine one and spine two. And the order of these uh, constraints is again important. Um, so you should really process the um, sort of the root nodes first and process the leaves uh, at last. So we want to move our head down and our spine is at the top here. Yeah. Um, the axis we need to just double check so if we look at spine one uh, the forward axis is negative uh, green which is the y axis so negative y um, and for the spine two it is positive y so spine one should be negative y spine two should be positive y uh, just make sure the rotation offset is turned off and let's check that out Woo! <laughs> Sweet. Looks uh looks well good. 
Um, <laughs> it's probably like a little bit too exaggerated, so it's really easy to turn the stuff down. Uh, you can just use the weight knob things here. So if I just set that to like I don't know, something smaller, 0 0.2, yeah, it's it looks a little bit better. It's not so uh, drastic. <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean this is looking pretty pretty finished really there's just a uh, one final thing to to check we just want to verify that all of this stuff is actually working um i mean it looks good but we don't know we haven't really verified that the aim axis is actually pointing directly at the center of the screen um so oh i need to just paste these values back in so the final way to check this I find is just visualizing the aim look at node and the aim axis. So to do that we can just create a uh, 3D sphere and add that as a child of the look at node. Uh, reset the position and should be somewhere around here. It's over there. Let's just set the size maybe like 0 0.3 just so it's a bit smaller. Cool and the other thing that we need to do, oh well, let me just show you that first. Cool, so in the scene, um, maybe it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, yeah, you can see the sphere uh, on the crosshair there. So that's actually, yeah, the, the thing that we're looking at, the node that we're looking at in our constraints. Um, so let's just do basically the same for the look at axis. So I'm gonna do that using a cube uh, and I'm gonna attach the cube to the weapon and, oops. Let's just reset the position, set the scale to something small, um, and then you just want to like position it. So it's kind of, let me just pull this up a minute. Position the cube so it's like coming out of the barrel of the weapon. About there is good. Maybe let's just make this a bit smaller. Oops. About there, up a little bit. Something like that is pretty good. And we'll just make this now super long. It's basically like a laser sight coming out of the weapon. Cool. Um, yeah, so we'll use that axis to check that it overlaps with our look at node. Um, and I'll just reset the position on the weapon here. So if we hit play. Oops. Oh, uh, crap. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. The when I added the sphere, it actually creates uh, colliders, uh, which we need to turn off. So if we just remove them from the sphere and the cube. Check play mode. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, we can see our laser is passing through the, the center of that object um, pretty pretty accurately. Um, the only thing is this, uh, this delay, this like, lag and jitter you can see. Um, which is actually not not great and it's going to be just makes your weapon not very accurate uh, when you're doing raycasts and, and that sort of thing so to fix that uh, we it's it's an update order problem um, I've actually made this little diagram thing here let me show you uh, yeah so currently the animator has been updated inside fixed update and when the animator updates it's uh, updating our root locomotion the um, forward backwards left right keys and the animation rig which is all the IK stuff that we've set up so basically the weapon is aiming at that um, that aim look at node we set up and then uh, what happens in late update is Cine Machine updates uh, processes the mouse move and changes the camera position which in turn changes the look at node so by the time it comes to rendering um, our look at node is now ahead of where our IK is so we we basically need to move Cine Machine before the animator update um, like that <laughs> amazing transition uh, yeah so this was the only way I could figure out how to actually do this um, it's not super flexible about changing update orders from what I can see in unity um, but Cine machine has got a thing called blend update method and it's currently set to late update so if we change that to fixed update and then uh, Actually, I can do this at runtime to show you what it looks like. So if we set that back to late update, yeah. So we can see the jitter here. Let me make the screen bigger. We can see like the jitter here. Um, and if we go to Cine Machine 
and change the blend update to fixed update. Yeah, it's now way better. Um, did I even? Oh, yeah, you may have your update method set to animate physics, um, which is still incorrect because even though now Cine Machine and the animation are both updated during the physics step, then it's a bit confusing about which one will update first. Um, so to fix that, I just forced the animator to update during the normal update and Cine Machine updates during fixed update. So the final thing that we need to do is actually just um, write some tiny amount of code to adjust this, uh, this aiming layer in and out um, as we press like our right mouse button for example um, so if we just go to our character aiming script yeah this is actually the first time we're opening the code editor which is cool um, so we need to get a reference to our rig uh, and that can be found in the unity engine dot animations dot rigging that's the new animation rigging package namespace um, and it's called rig so let's call this like aim layer something like that and then um, just do this an update there's no point processing input and fixed update um, it's just doing more work than you need to really so inside update uh, we can get the um, basically just check if the mouse button is down mouse button so I'm gonna use the right mouse button so if the mouse button is down so we actually need to create a new variable called aim duration um, let's just give this a value of like 0 0.3 I guess uh, and this is going to control how long it takes us to aim after pressing the right mouse button so we can update the weight of the rig layer using that variable so just plus equals time dot delta time divided by aim duration otherwise we can just subtract that weight amount so we just divide by the aim duration here just to normalize it into a zero to one range so if we just build that go back to unity uh, yeah hit play uh it's crashed <clears throat> um i think i forgot to assign a reference somewhere yeah so the character aiming yeah actually i didn't Need to make this public and actually assign it. So if we go to the character aiming scripts, uh, we can now assign the weapon aiming layer. And fingers crossed, this all works. Cool. Nice. Let's see what that looks like from here. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's pretty good. Um, I would probably just increase this duration make it a little bit faster like 1.8 or something yeah something like that it's pretty cool that's it for this tutorial guys uh, if you made it to the end really appreciate you watching uh, hopefully you followed along with some of your own assets and everything went smoothly for you uh, if it didn't uh, just leave a comment in the comment section below I'll try to try to help you out where I can um, and yeah I'm gonna be releasing a ton more of these videos uh, around the animation rigging package um, procedural animation just this whole space is pretty interesting to me right now so if you'd like to see more of those videos uh, just hit the subscribe button check that bell notification icon and hit the like button and yeah we'll see you again Kakite!